Yo, what is up guys? My name is Grizzly. Welcome back to another League of Legends video. In this video, I'm gonna do a top lane guide for Hecarim top lane, and I think that the champion in general right now is in a quite good state. Uh, he hasn't really been played in top lane for about two years, I think, but when he was played in top lane, he was obviously played in pro play all the time, so the champion's kit obviously has potential in top lane, but recently he has been a bit on the weaker side and therefore has not been able to lane properly. I don't think the problem with Hecarim has ever really been being useful after laning phase because the champion is just so abusive to uh, range champions, especially those without escapes. And since there's a lot of like uh, hard carry AD carries right now that usually don't have a lot of movement abilities, uh, the champion obviously becomes a lot stronger in uh, those metas. So uh, the way I noticed the champion is doing really well right now is that I looked a lot on statistics on ranked games played in Korea and I noticed that the champion top lane both has like a 15% play rate of all the Hecarim games and it also wins like an extraordinary amount like if you have the right setup and stuff uh, you basically win like 56 to 57% now that is quite skewed because obviously the ones playing Hecarim top right now are Hecarim uh, one-trick ponies or mains in general, uh, and they pick it in situational matchups probably. But I would say that the champion, if it gets popular, would still sit at around like a 51 to 52 percent win ratio in the current state because the champion is actually really strong. Uh, the weakest part of the champion is probably the early game, and so he can get quite abused by champions such as Darius. Uh, that's not really much you can do in those matchups, and it's really like rough to blind pick the champion. But a good thing with blind picking him, however, uh, is that the enemy will probably think that you're going in jungle, and uh, therefore they won't counter pick you. So it can be a good blind pick, but it's quite risky if they can, if your jungler has picked like Graves or something, and it's quite obvious that it's going to be Hecarim top. But uh, other than that, the champion doesn't really have that m many weaknesses. Um, if they have a lot, a lot of range champions that can catch you out. Uh, that's also quite problematic because Hecarim really benefits from uh, jumping in and bursting and then being able to like stay in the fight and do a lot of damage. Like after his initial gap close, he doesn't really have a way to catch up to people except for like just running at them. And since you will be running Ignite and Teleport with the setup, uh, you re won't really take Ghost, so you won't have that chasing potential either. You will however build uh, Righteous Glory, so uh, that item will still help you quite a bit later on with the gap closing, but um, it's still like better to pick him into a lot of melees than into a lot of ranged, but if they have like an immobile AD carry, you should probably consider the champion because yeah, he's just like super strong right now. Um, so for the build, you basically want to build boots quite early on. We don't go inspiration with this build, so you won't get the free boots, but you really want to rush like Nina Tabis or Mercs quite early on, and then you want to go into... Um, like a Sheen and a Trinity Force, and the build order there really depends. For me, I usually just start off the game with a Corrupting Potion, then I build into Sheen, and then I go into my boats, and then I finish the Trinity Force. After Trinity Force, I go Righteous Glory, and then after Righteous Glory, it really depends on the enemy team comp again. If they have a lot of magic damage, I usually go Spirit Visage, because it scales so well with this W. If they don't have a lot of magic damage, I usually go into a Sterx Gage instead, because Sterx is really good on the champion, obviously it's really good for almost all bruisers. And you won't really be needing uh, Tiamat and Titanic, because you already have so much wave clear with your Q. So that's a good thing with the champion. Um, then after this, it's either like Trinity Force, uh, or I mean uh, Guardian Angel, um, or Randwins or Thornmail. Uh, even Gargoyle Stoneplate could be good if you really want to like fill the purpose of a main tank. So it's really like uh, situational and you can fill a lot of different roles, but generally you will be quite tanky and you'll also be dealing a lot of damage. Now for the runes, there's a lot of alternatives in my opinion. I think that face rush is really good for like stomping early game, uh, if you can manage to pull it off. Later on into the game, it also pr probably scales the best because uh, you can basically get in and out really quick, but it has like situational scaling. So sometimes face rush will be absolutely insane and sometimes it won't do anything at all. So overall, I actually prefer either Grasp or Conqueror uh, into like Bruiser matchups where you will be trading a lot uh, like with uh, extended trades, then Conqueror is better. And if you're gonna take like fast trades, uh, Grasp is probably better. And it also really depends like if you can 
like you really force the 100% all in where you're both like full HP and you can win it with Conqueror, then that's also superior. But in matchups where you actually won't win those fights, so for example like against an Irelia or a Jax or something, uh, it's a lot better to take Rasp and win those short trades and kind of space them because you also have longer auto attack range than them, so you can kind of win the laning phase that way. But for example against a Darius where if you actually manage to get into his face and you can avoid his Q with either your E or your ultimate, um, then you can actually just take Conqueror and straight up like kill him uh, in an all-in. Uh, I guess like a Yasuo, I would also take Conqueror because then if you actually really get onto him and then you can maybe ult his uh, knockup or something uh, to immune it, then, uh, then Conqueror is actually gonna make you a lot stronger in the all-in. So uh, as for how to play Hecarim in the game, uh, generally speaking, uh, I would say that you want to be uh, not like trying to split push to like get an inhib or something because uh, that strategy is really not that viable, except if you're playing like Trindamir. I would say just shove up the wave as far as you can and get priority, and then just look for roams, because Hecarim is one of the best roaming top laners in the game. So you can either roam by uh, using teleport, of course, but I would actually say that Hecarim moves so fast around the map that the optimal play to make is to shove the lane, and then either roam to bot or mid, and then you can teleport up to top again to catch the wave or something. So that's like the general thing you want to be looking for. Uh, also in matchups where you can't really do anything um, and you don't have priority, you're kind of reliant on your jungler. But keep in mind that your gank assistance is really weak unless you you have your ultimate. So don't like unnecessarily call up your jungler unless you have your ultimate ready because you really don't contribute that much with CC. So it can get like really awkward um, if your jungler doesn't really have good crowd control. So for example, if you have like a Graves jungle and you're not level six, you probably should not aim to gank your lane except if you're playing like Adarius that is like perma pushing or something because then it's obviously free. But um, that stuff is generally quite situational, but uh, uh, and in team fights later on into the game, uh, you should basically just like never look to peel, uh, because your peel is super weak. You really don't have that many peeling tools. You should uh, actually look to engage onto the enemy backline and cause disruption, uh, because generally speaking, like let's say you're kind of behind and you can't really kill an AD carry by yourself, it's still better to like ult into the backline and fear a lot of people and then try to e out and run away to disrupt them than just trying to peel uh, off like a Jax or something from your AD carry because that won't work, you really don't have that much CC to contribute with. So uh, if you can't kill the enemy backline, just cause disruption, it's better than yeah trying to peel because you won't be successful doing it most of the time. So those are some general tips on how to play the champion. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something from the tips. But other than that, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.